So despite the beard and the aura of smugness, I don't actually have any messianic pretensions. I've never forgiven anyone for anything in my life. But I'm on my way to Heathrow to fly to America to make a one-hour special about why we believe things. Um, I'm not known in America, so I can use five different fictional names to approach five different influential people who promote various paranormal belief systems. And using my skills of magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection and showmanship, I want to see if I can convince them that I have special abilities in, those, in their particular fields. And the idea is to see how easy or hard it will be to get them to endorse me. Whether we believe in psychic ability, crystal energy, alien abduction, talking to the dead, or Christianity, we are rightly or wrongly buying into a very powerful belief system. Now, I'm not interested in attacking anyone's beliefs, but I think as intelligent human beings, we should be prepared to question our beliefs and the people who encourage us to make life decisions based on the information they give us. And that's what this show's about. In this show, you'll see me pose as Daniel Owen, the psychic who can see what you're drawing when you're in a different room. James Lawrence, who can convert you to Christianity with a touch. Robert Frawley, the new age entrepreneur with a machine which records your dreams. Richard Collins, the alien abductee who is left with an ability to sense your medical history. And Fraser Sherwell, who talks to the dead. I'll meet a high-profile expert in each of those five areas, and I'll try and get each to endorse me as the real thing. If at any point they ask me if it's a trick, I'll say yes and I'll own up. But the question is, will they ask? You're sharp enough to question what I do because you know I deal in illusion. It's all about questioning. But there are beliefs we're not encouraged to question, and these are often the beliefs upon which we're asked to make important life decisions. These are the areas where we should test and look for misinformation, and where the big names in those fields should apply the same rigour, because often we're making those life decisions based on the information we get from those people. Uh, the psychics are the first people I have to try and convince. Uh, it is making me a bit nervous, because I know I can't um, give a performance as I normally would. You know, um, it, it feels like someone who's learned some sleight of hand magic going, going in to cheat at a game of poker with top poker players. Um, and again, if the psychics ask me if it's real, I will tell them no, and I'll come clean. Sedona is a whole town based on circular belief systems. A quarter of the people here think they're psychic, and four million people a year come to visit this self-proclaimed spiritual mecca and sample its energies and its vortices and its other quite possibly imaginary constructs. The town is a mixture of undeniable beauty, tackiness, and big business. This is the Sedona Creative Life Center. This is where you come to be taught psychic ability. It has a massive profile. People come from all over the world to attend its famous workshops and seminars. We're going to talk to a woman called Abby Hayden. She's a very well-respected and published teacher here, and she'll be accompanied by some other people from this very successful center who also teach such abilities. These are the people who encourage you to be psychic and transform your life. These respected psychics have been told that I, Daniel Owen, developed psychic abilities after being struck by lightning 10 years ago. The remote viewing test is a classic psychic demonstration, and this is what I'm going to replicate, except I don't have any psychic abilities. There's a lot of teaching. A lot of people come from all over the world. But how do you begin to go about teaching something like developing a psychic mm. ability? How, does, how, do, how do you do that? It's basically reminding people they already have these gifts and to kind of wake it up within them mm -hmm. to, to help them see their own inner gifts. I, mean, I imagine if, if, you're, if you're giving 
advice to people that they may make life decisions based on the information that you're, you're giving them. And for, me, and for me, that's quite a frightening responsibility. I don't, I mean, I don't know, how, how would you know that that's authentic? My motto is if someone comes and asks me to do something, that means I can do it, whether I've ever done it or not. So, so that, and having that attitude, um, just being open and knowing that this person was guided to me and I must be able to give them the right information um, has really helped me to develop a lot of things. For my demonstration of remote viewing, Abby will draw pictures in another room without anyone seeing her and I'll try and pick up what she's drawing. When psychics do this as a test, the results are pretty poor. It's roughly what you get for guessing. Now, what is it you want me well, to do? Well, I'm going to get you to draw it like this. I'm going to get you to draw a picture. Okay. All right? All I'd say is keep it relatively simple. Please don't make it too detailed. Right, then right. it's messed up. Um, you shout ready when you're done. Focus on the picture. Step into it a little bit and imagine that it's vivid and, and real. That really helps me. And I will try again. I'll get these guys to write down whatever impressions I get. Abby's isolated in the other room, and no one can see whatever she decides to draw. She hasn't been prepared for this, and she can draw whatever she likes. Yet I will try and tell what she draws from the next room.